and a half minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Today, national unemployment rests at 9.2 percent, but it's even higher in my state of Michigan at 10.5 percent. Gasoline costs 3.80 a gallon or more in many areas, up a dollar from last year. Political unrest halfway around the world disrupts the flow of oil to markets, causing prices to rise. Most leaders in this situation would be searching for a project that would create jobs, help bring down gas prices, and yes, provide a stable and secure source of oil to replace imports from dangerous parts of the world. Our president is being handed such a project on a silver platter, and he's dangerously close to letting it slip through his fingers. Our northern ally, Canada, has discovered an oil resource comparable to the size of Saudi Arabia, and they want to send the oil here to the United States. Five major labor unions have thrown their support behind the pipeline because it's going to create more than 100,000 jobs. Yet this administration has allowed the permit application to languish for nearly three years, even saying that they were inclined to support it almost a year ago in October. This pipeline, the Keystone XL, if approved, would dramatically improve our energy security. According to DOE, the pipeline would essentially eliminate our Middle East oil imports. It would provide for a massive influx of stable oil into the market, something desperately needed as threatened supply to Africa send prices into orbit. This country needs the president to make a decision on Keystone XL's permit. The uncertainty has gone on too long. And if we don't act, these energy supplies will go someplace else. That's why we have this legislation, H.R. 1938. This bipartisan bill doesn't tell the president how to decide. It just requires them to make a decision. I commend my colleagues, uh, Lee Terry and Ross, for finding a common sense and, yes, bipartisan solution. If we don't build this pipeline, Canada will find another buyer. The Chinese have expressed significant interest in Alberta's oil sands. Are we going to stand by and watch China receive imports from our ally while we're forced to rely on imports from unstable countries? I sure hope not. While I believe construction of this pipeline is necessary and important, I know it has to be done safely. Last year, 20,000 barrels of oil did spill through a creek that runs through my district. And I've made pipeline safety a priority in our committee and just this week, we're going to be moving forward on an effective pipeline safety legislation to protect the environment and, yes, our communities. This legislation will ensure that crucial energy supplies, like the oil received from Canada, is transported safely throughout the country. We need a yes, bill on this, yes vote on this bipartisan vote. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen.